Well, this episode is going to be very interesting. We're going to talk about Officer Wendling of the Organized Crime Task Force. And we're going to let you decide whether or not the information that we have about him planning a hit on Pete LaFrasha was true or not. This is going to be a little bit long. It's maybe 15 minutes of, of uh, viewing time. But you need to watch it because you need to start putting the pieces together. And this is the first part of a three-part series. So, I'm going to start by reading this from an article about 10 years ago in 2001. And it start, the excerpt is, Not long before the pizza squad learned of their own, one of their own was liable to be whacked because of their constant surveillance of the Gambino crews. That was the idea of Antonio Nino Gaggi, a Gambino capo who headed a notorious crew that included the infamous Roy DeMeo, whose crew is believed to have killed as many as 200 people. This is a quote from Joe Wendling. They thought about killing one of us and having our heads sent back to the DA's office as a message, Wendling recalled, so we sent them a message. Wendling walked into a club with one of his partners, Kenny McCabe, and at this point, I'm going to tell you, Kenny McCabe was one of the most honest cops uh, around, and that uh, Pete even attests to that fact in the next episode, so you need to remember that and watch that, okay? So, with one of his partners, Kenny McCabe, where Gadgie was having dinner, he recalled McCabe telling Gadgie, quote, if you kill one of us, you better kill all of us at the same time. Because you guys are all going to get killed and will get medals. Well, Kenny McCabe is dead and he was an honorable cop. Okay? And Joe Wendling is alive. And when you see this video that we're about to show, you'll make probably the same conclusions I did. That it was probably Joe who said that to Nino, who's dead too and can't tell any other stories about that particular meeting. So, as you look forward to this, I want you to remember what you heard and what you've seen, and I'll share the article with you. And don't forget, watch all of this and put all the pieces together, because you will be the, you will be the deciding factor. The public will decide, not the courts. I tell you, you know, like I said, I don't believe this cop was on take. I just believe that he was right. uh, obsessed with solving cases, you know, and I just happened to be he thought I was the weak link, and he got embarrassed because he found that I wasn't. And the thing is, he later on, oh, let me tell you that, later on, later on, after this trial, he's sitting in, he's sitting in the courtroom, right? And I'm walking out. Now, he thinks, uh oh, they come in, the jury goes out, all right? I'm sitting there with my mother and my girlfriend, right? And uh, it's the cold recess. So I think they're going to take me back in and lock me up because, you know, it's a double homicide. So he's sitting in the courtroom, right? And I'm walking out now. He thinks, I oh, they come and the jury goes out. All right, I'm sitting there with one of my girlfriend, right? And uh, it's the cold recess. So I think they're going to take me back in and lock me up. Right. Because, you know, it's a double homicide. So they let me go to lunch. I said, totally. Oh. So I go down and <laughs> I'm running. <laughs> now, I sit down with one day eat lunch, right? And I'm looking at that I take two bites. So I said, I'm going to go to lunch. You know, I kiss my girlfriend. I kiss my mother. I start walking away. My mother's, where you going? I said, where am I going? I'm going <laughs> far, far away. <laughs> I said, they're talking about 50 years here. Then she said, you're not going to get convicted. I said, oh, I said, what is that, Crystal Ball? I said, this ain't bingo, ma. Yeah. You, know, you lose your home no matter what. This yeah. ain't going on no more. Yeah. She said, I'm telling you, they're not going to convict you. I said, oh, oh, my God. She said, come on back, sit down. I said, ma, this is me. I'd rather fight him as a free man than a man in prison because yeah. it's very hard. Oh, yeah. We know how that is. It's, it's impossible to fight him from prison. Impossible. You, you can't. You, you're worn out. You're exhausted. You make bad choices. They keep you tired. They keep you on the run. Back and forth to court. Back and forth to court. And, and then little cells held by yourself for hours on end and days on end. Yeah, it's ridiculous. And, and, and it's, a, it's a whole other language. Yeah, shit. You know, absolutely. Yeah, it's nothing like... What you say is what it is. No, no, no. So no, no. My, mother, my mother's looking at me. My girl's looking at me. 
Nothing like that moment, is there? There's nothing like that moment when they're when they're when you're, you're waiting. There's nothing. You just you you can be as confident as you want, but anything can go wrong at that moment. Anything can go wrong. Anything can go wrong. The only time I felt that kind of suspense is when I started me giving uh, the verdict, and she says, "How do you find a defendant if you love her?" She they said, "My heart stopped for a couple of seconds. Not guilty." I said. I was with my mother. She went to me again. I said, wow. So, so now I'm really, really like, I'm not laughing, but I'm ecstatic that, you know, I'm walking home. I'm going home, you know? Because yeah. I, really, I had nothing to do with that shit. To be honest with everybody, I said, I was old gang member there. I didn't have nothing to do with it. <laughs> so <laughs> as I'm walking out, Joe Wemming says to me, he says, huh, you think I know you didn't do it? He says, let me tell you something. You're guilty of so many other things. I'm going to keep getting you and getting you you can't afford a good lawyer no more like now. And he says, then you're going to have to come to me. He says, how dare you laugh at me like that? I said to us, I'm not laughing at you, Joe. I says, I'm just ecstatic that I'm going home today. He says, he says, rest today. There'll be another day. I said, look, you're a cop. Whatever you think I am, I'm not. And it's, that's your job to do what you have to do. For, for, for the world, I guess, for society, for people that, he says, he says, but before I get you, I'm going to get that son of a bitch fucking cop up there and testify for you. I says, he told the truth. What happened was, there was a, supposedly a witness. This guy was a CI back, forget it. And he said that I had told this, all this bullshit and that I had done this shit. Meanwhile, <laughs> so, now this, this guy that was, they had threatened to be a snitch, happened to be the cop that testified to me, personal, uh, how do you say, when he used to come to him with the information, he was like his uh, manager. He was his handler. Yeah, he was his handler. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. He was his handler. And, and he told the truth, he said, I understand this guy, he said, they threatened my CI, my personal CI, <laughs> that he committed a homicide in New York. I know for a fact, this kid wouldn't kill nothing. So he told, he said whatever they told him to say. And I, that, I guess, helped along with the jury. So Joe says, well, he says, I'll be seeing you again. No, I didn't pay no attention. You know, a lot of cops want to see me again. You know, I, yeah. I, wasn't, yeah. I, I wasn't a good boy, but I wasn't really that bad. <coughs> Excuse me. So now, uh, what happens to be uh, one, one, late one night, right? And uh, I'm out. It's cold. It's winter time. And it's just dying on flatlands and... Uh, uh, what was it? The type of, yeah, and uh, Flatlands and Remsen Avenue. Oh, Remsen. yeah. What and was the name of the diner? Do you remember? Uh, Venus Diner, maybe? Yeah. Yes, that's right. Venus. That's right. That's right. And we so, talked about that a few times. So, outside. Is that where you used to do your morning meetings for the cars? <laughs> you have your morning breakfast? Yeah, wherever they want to go. <laughs> I knew it was a free meal, so I went. <laughs> so at that time, at that time, they had bone boots out, bone boots outside, you know. And this would happen to be where yeah, I could uh, yeah, like the like the good fellas, where the nearest yeah, called exactly, them fox. Yeah, yeah. yeah we the used to have foxes too. The yeah. one Jimmy pushed, the one Jimmy pushed over. <laughs> yeah, 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 that's it. <laughs> so I pull, I pull up to the phone, push, I can open my window, reach out, grab the phone, dial the number, and stay warm, yeah. you know. So I'm in oh, my yeah, I remember those. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in my Jeep. I'm in my Jeep. I, I make a phone call, right? And I'm talking to my girl. And uh, all of a sudden, curbside, I see this little 57 Chevy black Cadillac in prime. I ain't thinking nothing of it. So the guy gets out of the passenger seat, right? Got a pea coat on, beard, dungarees. I'm looking at him saying, mm. And I said, excuse me, probably off the phone in a couple of minutes, you know? And he said, okay, gives me the eyes like it's okay. 
as I'm talking to my girl, I, I'm watching this guy, and he's slowly inching his way around the back of his, his Jeep now. Why is he doing that? Right? I'm saying. And when he gets to the left, probably about 10, 15 feet from the passenger's uh, driver's side, yeah. guy in the back of the car, Cadillac. Now, anybody knows, with a two-door Cadillac, when you get out of it, you push the seat forward, and you step out, like, you put your foot well, out. Back, well, your back is to the back of the car. Right. You can step out of it, face it yeah. forward. So yeah. much this guy pushes his seat forward and he steps out backwards. That was it. As he as he did that, then my Jeep is run. I said, Well, I took my, my left foot, put a lot of clutch, took my right foot, pushed my Jeep into gear. Now it's a year, right? And uh I'm telling the girl, listen, if you don't hear from me in a few seconds, just do call my mother and tell you, you know, code 13. See my mother do give it a <laughs> So I'm, now I'm going to watch this guy, so now I think it's a hit, you know, because he gets out yeah. the dirty double meets at a beer. And uh, he turns around and starts charging. Go 13 now. So I panic, you know what I mean? I said, whoa, yeah. it's on, here it is. Yeah. And he ran so fast that I took up my Jeep, he jumped, and unfortunately to this day I regret it, he hit the front of my Jeep and bounced off. So now I ain't definitely stopping it. So I go to the front of the diner where there's people coming out, you know? I figured, but you hit, they're going to start shooting everybody. So I get away. I get away. Then. So next thing, uh, I find out that he uh, he's very upset about this. You know? And who is this? And who is this? I, it's Joe Lemley, you know? Oh, okay. And, uh, oh, okay. What happened okay. was, what happens why this happened, because apparently that night, a couple of my associates were at a body shop and, uh, they were Kenny and, and Rated. What was it? Somehow, what was it? You, 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 you broke up. Yeah, they, they intended to go to this place and raid it, you know what I mean? Oh, Thinking these guys oh, okay. were scared shit, but they weren't. It's where they used to go hang out and bullshit and laugh, you know, have them right. go. So what happened was, somebody happened to see outside, a couple of cars parked across the street, so they went inside and he told them, listen, excuse <coughs> me, we got a company. With that, they all left. But they all left in separate cars. They all went different ways. So these guys took off and all over the place, right? Now, I don't know nothing about this shit. Right, and, right. And his body shop is only like maybe four or five blocks from where I am. So when they couldn't catch nobody else, there I was, the lone duck. They said, there's <laughs> LaFroche. There's LaFroche. Let's get him. <laughs> and, and, there's LaFroche. And that day, this guy really had a hard on for me. And I can understand, you know, Show me a badge. Show me something. Don't come running at me flicking a cigarette. I think you're, I think you're one of the other guys. You know what I mean? Do, 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 do there. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah. So we find out through a reliable source happens to work for the government, you know, through Roy, that uh, this guy is going to do the no-no to me. This guy tells Roy to tell me, I got to go away because this cop's going to do a bad thing to me and make it look like I was a bad guy. And I, I oh, he's going to set you up. So he's going to set you oh, up. Yeah, like yeah, you were, yeah, like you were in a shootout, and he was going to whack you. Right. And I, you know, I, I said, but he really didn't get hurt. Is that worth killing somebody else? I said, why don't we just yeah. Oh, yeah. So we found out that he was really married to a uh, uh, wise guy's niece. You know, not that he was involved with the mob or anything like that. Wendley. Wendley. And, and, you know, he knows the code that, you know, the code is right. you don't want a cop. You know, right. As far as me, the rumor was that I had a hit out on him. Now, in a million years, you don't uh, you don't even think I heard a cop or family, or, right. you know, anything, but, anything. but mostly a cop, you know, that was the law, you know what I mean? Don't hurt. Yeah. So I, I, too I, much I, heat. It's too much heat, right? It was, it was <laughs> big problems, right? So, like I said, boy comes to me and tells me, I gotta leave, you know. But he tells me a good way. Roy really, really cared about me. I believe in a certain way. And uh, he says, you got to go, Pete. You got to go away. Because if you don't go away, I think something bad's going to happen. You know, and he, he explained it to me. I said, listen, I never did nothing to that fucking guy. He jumped in front of the fucking Jeep. He did all that crazy shit. Why me? So I said, I ain't running from nobody. I didn't do nothing fucking wrong. So now I'm going you got to go. I ain't running from nobody. <laughs> so he says, listen, he says, I'm got to go. And I'm saying, no. He says, are you crazy? I'm telling you to go. I said, okay, I'm going home. So I go home. <laughs> so Roy sneaks behind my back. I just had a brand new son, my son Pete. And uh, he goes to my, my wife, right? Andy, and he tells her that, uh, listen, 
You got to get Petey out of here. There's going to be a problem. He's too stubborn because he feels he didn't do nothing to this guy or anything really bad, which he didn't. And uh, it ain't going to matter. Just, this person don't like him. You got to get him out of here. So she comes to me, convinces me, you know, we're going to go to Florida on vacation. So I didn't know why at the time I'd give him some money so I didn't have to go crazy down there breaking my yeah. ass. And uh, we left, you know. And uh, I found out later on that he had spoke to her. And, uh, and you know what I mean? She was, my, she was my son's mother. And I, I just didn't want to have any anything happen to my family or, you know. There you have it, folks. You saw what I saw, heard what I heard, right? So in the next episode, we're going to talk about Kenny McCabe and defend his honor. Joe Wendling, not so sure. I kind of believe this man took a hit out on Pete, and, and that's why Roy paid money to have him to leave. Roy was not a scared guy. He didn't run scared. If he thought Pete was going to be fine, why did he send his wife and kids away, tell his wife to get Pete to leave town? People didn't want to go. But I'm telling you, this cop was after him. This cop told other mobsters that he was going to kill Pete. And I don't know about you, but I think that's wrong when our public officials are threatening to kill people and take the law into their own hands. I think that's called vigilante law. I think that's illegal in our country, but you decide.